Hello and welcome to this session in which we would look at an exercise or a CPA simulation that illustrate the modified basis. In the prior session, we explained the modified basis. We explained the theoretical framework behind the modified basis, why government entities, certain government entities use the modified basis. In this session, we're going to work few journal entries that illustrate the modified basis. We're going to compare the modified basis to the cash basis. We're going to compare the modified basis to the full, full accrual basis. So it's very important to see how would you book a transaction under the modified basis versus the other basis. And in this session, we're going to be working at four. We're going to be looking at four different transactions. And what I'm going to do as well, compute the profitability under each method, whether it's the cash basis, modified basis, or full accrual basis. What I'm going to do at this point, switch to the Excel sheet and prepare the journal entries under the various accounting basis. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. Let's start by looking at the first transaction. A donor pledged half a million dollar given the organization a legally enforceable 60 day note for the amount. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna work the cash basis. So what entry do we have to make under the cash basis for a pledge made to an organization? And the answer is, if we're using the cash basis, we don't have to do anything because no cash exchange hand as of yet. Remember the cash basis, focuses on the cash cash in cash out transaction one we would say no entry because no cash exchange hands transaction two the donor paid two hundred thousand of the amount pledged well guess what if the donor paid two hundred thousand i know for sure i am going to have some sort of a cash why because if i received cash i am going to debit cash and this is the cash basis what do i credit cash in it's i'm gonna credit some sort of a revenue some sort of a revenue whether you want to call it contribution revenue pledge revenue it's some sort of a revenue it's contribution or pledge revenue for two hundred thousand. so this is for transaction number two transaction number two let's look at transaction number three the entity purchased a building for four hundred thousand, paying one hundred and twenty five thousand, and given a 30-year mortgage for the balance building useful life is 30 years what do we have to do for transaction three well one thing i'm going to start with paying cash because i did pay cash for how much for 125 i can't i can't run away from that i have to credit cash because i paid cash if it says paying cash i can't i can't deny that now the question is what do i debit under the cash basis well under the cash basis what do I care about? I care about expenditure. If I pay something, it's called an expenditure. It's not called an expense because full accrual use the term expense. So what do I debit? So if I credited cash, what do I debit? I debit an account called building expenditure or expenditure dash building. So it's an expenditure for 125,000. What about the long-term note? The remainder, which is the remainder is what? 300 and... Uh, 275 i don't record the remainder i don't have long-term notes i don't have long-term assets what i have under the cash basis i have revenues and expenditure and how do i determine my revenues and expenditure when i receive cash and when i pay cash therefore this is the entry so what is expenditure an expenditure is a decrease in net asset it's going to reduce your Income for cash purposes, that's a reduction in your income. It's a decrease in net asset, reduce your income. So that's what an expenditure. Transaction four, the entity hire employees by the end of the period, should be a period. By the end of the period, they have earned $6,000 in wages, but not yet paid. What do we do for cash basis? Nothing. If we did not pay the employees yet, we don't have an expenditure. We don't have an expenditure. Why? Because we are using the cash basis, therefore no entry. 
Now, at the end of the period, if I ask you to prepare the income statement under the cash basis, what would you say? Well, for the income statement, I have revenues and I have expenditure. What's my revenues? My revenues are 200,000 from the contribution and my expenditure is 125, my profit is 75. And obviously the balance sheet, I have 75,000 in cash and my fund balance will be 75,000. I received 200, I paid 125, my cash is 100,000 and my profit is my fund balance of 75. That's on the balance sheet. Now I'm gonna go ahead and prepare the journal entries for the same transaction, however, using the modified accrual, modified accrual. And this is the new method that we learned about and do the new method you're gonna be using for gov certain governmental fund, the modified accrual. Starting with the first entry, a donor pledged half a million dollar giving the organization a legally enforceable 60 day note. Well, now, what do, what do modified accrual focuses on? Modified accrual focuses on, this is what you have to keep in mind, current assets and current liabilities. This is what they focus on. Remember, the focus is the current economic resources. Well, if somebody pledged money and it's enforceable within 60 days, do I have a receivable? Yes, I do. It's within 60 days. I would say I do have a receivable and I'm going to call this notes receivable or pledge receivable for how much for the amount and the amount happens to be how much was the amount the amount is half a million therefore uh no the yeah the amount is half a million not 200,000 the amount is half a million so I have a note or pledge receivable for half a million so I do notice the, mod the difference between cash and modified accrual, or mod again, I said we can call modified cash as modified accrual or modified cash, but under the modified accrual, I have a receivable. Transaction two. Well, I did receive the 200,000. Great. I debit cash and I credit the notes receivable for 100,000. This is actually 200,000. 200,000, I debit cash, credit notes receivable, 200,000. That's transaction two. Well, if I receive the cash, I have to debit the cash and it goes against my receivable. Now transaction three, the entity purchased a building. So notice those are a little bit different than the cash. The, the, the entity purchased a building for 400,000 paying 125 in cash. Well, I can't run away from my cash. I have to credit cash. How much I have to credit cash? 125,000. The question is, what do I debit? Well, under modified accrual, I'm only focusing on current assets. The building is a long-term asset, so I cannot record the building on my books. What do I record? I record an expenditure. Well, this sounds like the cash basis. Indeed, just like the cash basis, I would record the transaction at 125. Because under the modified accrual, my Focus is the current resources. My current resources are current assets and current liabilities. Therefore, that's what I would do. Transaction four. We hired employees. By the end of the period, they earned 6000 That amount is not yet paid. Do I record this under modified accrual? Let me ask myself, what is modified accrual? Focusing on current assets and current liabilities. My current resources. How about wages? Are they a current a liability? And the answer is yes. My wages are current liabilities because I have to pay those wages in the near future. Well, if that's the case, I have to record some sort of an expenditure. Remember, I'm calling it an expenditure because modified accrual. And I have to credit some sort of a liability because I do record my current liabilities under modified accrual. Therefore, I debit salaries expenditure and I credit wages payable. And this is how I would record this transaction. So notice all what I'm focusing on is receivables, current receivables, current payables. That's different than the cash basis where you have no, nothing other than cash transaction. Now, if I'm asked to prepare the income statement under the modified accrual, my revenue will be half a million, expenditure of 125, and I have wages expenditure of 6,000, my profit will be 396,000. Now let's take a look if I have to prepare these journal entries under the full accrual, which is the method that we are comfortable with, should be most comfortable with. Starting with a donor pledged half a million. If the donor pledged half a million, I have a receivable under, 
Under the full accrual, I record my receivable of half a million and I have some sort of a contribution revenue. And notice this transaction is the same as modified accrual because I have a receivable. Well, full accrual, do record the receivables. Same thing with the cash. I received cash from previously promised contribution. It's 200,000 in cash and this is pledged receivable I, I debit my cash credit my receivable again the same thing as modified accrual now I purchased the building I purchased the building for 400,000 I paid 125 and the remainder is a note full accrual remember what does what what's the measurement focus on full accrual it's all assets all liabilities it encompasses all assets all economic resources so what do i have to do let's start with the easy part the easy part is i paid cash how much cash did i pay i paid 125. do i put the building on the books for sure i put the building on the books this is full accrual 400 000. well what would the, the difference is what the difference is notes payable do i include the notes payable of course i do this is full accrual so full accrual you would record long term assets long-term liabilities we should not be surprised here this is the, the method that we know so now you can compare for example how we treated a building under the full accrual versus how we treated the expenditure of the building under modified accrual and cash basis and last but not least we we need to accrue six thousand dollar of wages well hopefully we all know how to, to accrue an expense we debit an expense credit wages payable notice I'm, I'm i'm emphasizing the word expense to reflect it's an accrual versus it was called an expenditure for modified accrual for modified accrual the terms are different expense versus expenditure i will talk about that later on a little bit more the difference but basically expenditure is different than expenses expenditure is a modified accrual term and let's take a look at the income statement based on the accrual method we have revenues now we have the building we have to book depreciation expense on the building i took just the building divided it by 30 years and we have wages expense of 600,000. this is an expense not expenditure our profit will be 480,667. so notice what we did we looked at the various component at the various component of cash basis modified accrual and full accrual what should you do now go to farhat lectures go to farhat lectures look at additional resources lectures mcqs true false look at the notes to help you understand modified basis of accounting this is a governmental accounting course uh, you want to do good in that course you want to do good on your cpa exam good luck study hard invest in yourself